What's up guys? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle. My name is Splattercat and we are hanging out here in Nompton with the Nomi homies. Just taking a look, I think the Rag Kingdom heard my bitching and moaning. And so over here you'll see that we have a merchant. I have once again fast-tracked building as many necklaces, gems, whatever. We've got all kinds of goodies here, so they're worth like 700 a pop. And so what we need to do now is see if we can't trade for some yaks. That's going to be a really big deal to me. So let's go down to here and see if he's got yaks with him today. He has, a, he has two female yaks. I think they'll still produce milk, even if, I'm almost positive they'll still produce milk, even if there's no male around. So we'll go ahead and try it. Let's throw as many, we have all these bronze hand axes and things that I really don't want in my inventory anymore, so we'll try and throw those into the back of the wagon while we're here, and you'll forgive me as I itch my nose for a moment. It's so weird, like the second you start recording, super itchy. Strangest thing ever. I don't know what triggers it, but it happens all the time. And so we've got poor sapphire necklaces here. We've got emerald rings. We probably want to wait a couple more minutes. We want to definitely get the thousand gold together. Oh, there's two of those. Okay, so that works out. So we'll take both the yaks and we'll just let that be that. And so there's our two yaks. And then we'll trade him for the rest of his stuff in just a moment. Let's go ahead and designate an area for our new yak friends who hopefully will survive the winter this time. We've got more than enough wheat crops coming in, so I think it should be okay. Our food supply is up to 449, which is incredibly good. That's going to be nice. We'll call this a yak pasture. Which, unlike rock lobster, completely different thing. Completely different. And we've got tons of straw, so that's going to be fine. I think we're going to say that one male and as many females as you want I thought we could have a few more whatever we'll put the females there and our ranchers should come along any moment and grab them the point of the yaks is that they're gonna add a little bit of milk to our stockpile which is gonna make it a little bit easier for us to survive now as far as the tiers of drinks go I'm pretty sure we're not talking about the tiers of drinks as though we're giving the purple nerval and their eyes are watering we're like we didn't punch drinks in the nose but anyways the tiers of drinks that's what I'm talking about the t-e-a-r-s of drinks Sorry, the T-I-E-R-S of drinks. God, right after I get done, you get tears on the brain. But anyways, as I was saying, did my rancher die? Where is my rancher right now? Do I have anybody assigned to be a rancher? Let's have a look. Professions. Overview. Rancher. We have one guy who's a rancher. He must be asleep right now. It's okay. The yaks won't go anywhere. She'll come and grab him in just a second grains we have 49 so that's 49 more breads we're going to be able to craft they will eat the breads first just so you guys know it's something that's unavoidable it's just gonna happen either way I should probably build a few more storage bins in here I guess actually no let's hold off on that right now our log supply is a little bit dubious at the moment not super interested in depleting myself right now Hoping we get at least another shipment of logs in, though. Or, I'm sorry, another growth of logs. But as I was saying, the tiers of drinks, I didn't want to leave one thing behind here. The tiers of drinks go water, milk, and then alcohol after that. And so I think wheat beer is the highest, but I'm not completely sure. I haven't looked at any of the tier lists in a long, long time for what works better than others. But there's a definite tier system in place, and the gnomes will always go for the highest tier thing. Oh, we have a mant. That's bad. Okay, so attack. All squads need to be on that. All other gnomes. So I want to make sure everybody else runs away. Ooh, we're going to lose her. Yep, Robin's toast. And we just can't keep losing farmers like this. It's just not sustainable. Get on out of here. So the first mant. What do you want to do about the mants? Well... And the question now is, will she die before she... Yeah, okay, so Robin bled to death. That's bad. That's very, very bad. Now, on the plus side, on the plus side, so things to think about right here, that was our first mant that was probing us. And as much as I do love being probed, our farmers keep getting killed, which is bad. Like, we have so much farming work to get done, and yet every single time somebody dies, it's a farmer. Every single time. And so that was really incredibly bad RNG right there, just so you can put that into perspective. The enemy always seems to be coming from this direction. I would reload this save personally. If you were playing this game by yourself, I would say to reload the game right now. Because we have not put ourselves in a good position for surviving. I don't know why he wasn't able to outrun the Mant. He may have been tired or anything else, but thus passed Robin, son of Bobbin. Or daughter, I don't know. Female or male, I can't really tell. Meh. 
Apparently the genitalia instantaneously disintegrate after death on gnomes. Our, our guards did a good job, and so with the, with the Mant Scout, my bit of advice here is if you don't get the Mant Scout, every now and again now, the Mants are going to send scouts at us. And what that means is that if we miss a scout, we get a Mant Invasion, which is really, really terrible. A Mant Invasion is going to suck if it happens. It will probably, it won't be the end of us, but it will more than likely kill a large majority of our guards. Why is my rancher... Just a question here. Like, where the hell is my rancher? As far as I can tell, I don't have one. Alright. Well... It's Poot, from what I can tell. And Poot's just been sleeping, like, all day. Alright, well, Poot's been asleep now for, like, 14 hours. So hopefully at some point, Poot will see it necessary to, like, wake up. Pist I really want to pistol whip Poot right now. It's actually kind of frustrating. And we might have a lot more things to sell at the moment. And so let's go find... All those emerald necklaces that have been crafted. I should probably... I put that on repeat, like two days ago. I should probably stop that from happening now. Before I use up all my bars on just random tradables. Let's go ahead and go to the market stall and what I'd like to do now is we'll go through and let's grab basically everything that he has. I mean I don't know what else to say about it aside from the fact that I've got such a huge stock of things that I can sell that we can really kind of clear up any of our discrepancies right now so that's gonna be an extra 36 logs which will put us back up to 80 something that'll be fine and we don't need clippings as far as I know tin we don't really need we could use some iron I'll take your grape seeds for sure so that we can plant vineyards mushroom seeds I've never grown mushrooms and it might be worth considering later on in the game once we've actually cleared out the underground areas and we've built above ground for now, I'm not going to think about it, though. We'll go 96 strawberries, take the grapes, we'll take the apples, take the wheat grain, strawberry wine, grape wine, apple wine. Not going to take the alpacas, that puts us at 733. God, these things are worth a lot of money. And then we'll throw an emerald ring in right there, and let's see if we can make up the discrepancy anywhere else. So I'm basically just going to trade this guy out entirely. So we're at 828 right now. Okay, so good trade right there. And past that point, it might be a good plan to start grabbing his tin and his... Yeah, his tin and his copper, just to ensure that we don't have to do anything else with mining. So let's jump on back down to all the trade goods. Which, believe me, they're up on a ledge. You've definitely got to jump to get there. It's... It's quite hazardous. So there's two right there. There's one there. This is at 1220. And I would guess that I could probably trade out something to make that a bit more even. So let's look at any of the random stuff we have here. Yak leather straps, not totally interested in that. Wheat straw, no, not going to sell that because I've fallen into that pit already. Probably have a ton of seed around here somewhere, though. Yeah, there it is. So we've got strawberry seeds just coming out of our ears. I'm going to go 160 strawberry seeds, which I think should allow us to get back up. There it is. So a nice even trade. And so that's probably one of the best traders we've ever had. That was really, really awesome for us. We managed to get a lot of stuff out of that trader. That will make our lives a lot easier. And so now that we've done that, I think what I'll do... Actually, I'm going to wait. Once our next crop of trees comes in, what I'll do is I'll wipe out the trees. And from there, Poot, what are you doing? In good health, just addicted to sleeping, apparently. Monitor Lizard has showed up, but we shouldn't have anybody run into combat for that one. I am going to do a head count on the weapon skills that people have right now. 46, very good. So she's now in the safety zone where she's probably going to be better at just about everything than most of the enemies we're going to come across. Clobbles is sitting at 53, which means he's basically like a god of the axe. 
and Mr. Cuddlesworth has himself sitting at 48 hammers. So we've got everybody well above where, once, at, you're, once you're at the point where you have mance, you really want everybody above 40. If they're not above 40, you have serious, serious problems on your hands. I don't know why some of these guys keep going down here, but I'm actually going to get rid of these beds. So that nobody does that anymore. They all sleep upstairs, and then we're going to undesignate this as well. So let's... Actually, I think that's going to do it a little bit easier. And so now, we've actually, for the first time, got extra space just sitting around. We might think about mushroom farming, possibly. I don't know what it takes to farm mushrooms, but we could give it a try. Let's designate an area as a underground farm. Well, we'll wait till these are deconstructed, and then we'll do it. How about that? On this side, we can cancel out all these jobs because we're looking pretty fair with regards to our food supply now. Oh, another Mant Scout. Damn. Okay, so we need to do that too. So everybody should get on that because what he'll do is he'll flee the map in just a moment. And if he gets away, we get that invasion and then bad things happen and we all sit around and cry for a while. He should also try and retreat once he's bleeding, which means that fighting him on the edge of the map right there is probably terrible as well. Can I butcher the mants, by the way? I think you get chitin or something when you butcher them. Let's see here. Oh no, you can't butcher them. I thought, maybe that's a different game. I thought that when you killed a mance, you could get stuff out of it. Now we are going to get a lot of mance scouts from here on out because our huge food supply is going to attract them. That is... Unfortunately, something that is well beyond our control. So, yaks. Are we just, like, not doing this right now? Or what's going on here? Just not bothering? Meh. Whatever. Just forget about it. I think we should probably... For the person that's responsible for this, we should probably increase these only slightly so that they do their job a bit better. And anyways, as I was saying, as soon as these get deconstructed, which I don't know if it's going to happen right now or if it's going to happen later, because our builders are now helping out with horticultural stuff, it becomes a little bit iffy as to whether it's going to work out the way we want it to. I've unfortunately had to outsource my work slightly. I say it looked like he wasn't carrying a weapon any longer, which is really, really terrible. I need to get down to the minus 50, and we need to get back to making sure everything is illuminated. So yeah, there's a corner right there that we missed. And all of the hubbub of being worried about the mants that have been attacking. Ooh, I want wall torches. Well, never mind. Whatever. It'll be okay. Well... Let's go ahead and start digging this way, maybe for some iron, and just kind of see where we end up. I can't promise that I've made the right decision right here. But we've got to try. That's the thing, is we've 100% just got to try and find iron, and I spaced that improperly. That's going to bother me forever, maybe even five ever, if I really think about it too much. So there's a little bit of work for our miners to do. Because we always send our miners down into the mines. That's just, that's how gnomes live. You have a kid, you put them in the mines. That's how it works. You gotta earn your place in gnomish society. You can't just jump straight into, like, the cool jobs, like making gems or anything, or, like, making weapons. You gotta spend some time in the mines first, and so off they go. Especially that guy. Come on, iron. We can do this. I believe. I believe. No? No iron? Well, these guys need better digging skills, too, for miners. They are just not hacking it right now. Okay, nothing found right there. Let's go ahead and jump into our furniture menu and put in our wall torches just to... And you've got to rotate these kind of weird sometimes. These can be really, really difficult to place every now and again. Nothing there. So we've got a big swing and a miss on two of our tunnels. And what appears like more coal. Well, I'm not really liking our... I'm trying to think about a good place. Like, the caverns are so widely spread that there is no 
there is no good place that we could actually burrow down and be more successful here. It's just kind of like, I may clear out this entire layer just with one big tunnel until I find iron. That may be all I can do. We are handling the manse without problems, which is really, really good. In fact, I haven't played the game in a while, but the goblins seem to be a bigger problem than the manse, which is something that I'm totally unaccustomed to. I'm finding that as we're playing through here, the... The goblins are a much larger threat than the mants have actually been so far. I don't think mants ever get weapons, and I think that may be the big equalizer right there. You know what they say about Mr. Winchester and all that. Probably never going to spend the time to mine out all of this coal. I doubt he's going to make it back. He's probably going to pass out on the floor. I bet you almost anything he's not going to make it back up to the dormitory. Have we got this tore down yet? Nope, still helping out with agricultural stuff. Then let's go ahead and take... Sorry, I'm moving jobs around a little bit right here. We're going to take our builders off the agricultural work for a while to make sure that they get the torches in because as of right now, all of our food and drink needs are taken care of over the long term of this gameplay, so we should be all right. And then I'm just going to send my builders down to ensure they get the job done when it comes to putting torches in place and also breaking down these beds, which... It may have canceled the deconstruct order when I did that, when I unassigned it. Yep, it did. So there we go. He should run in. We're going to get some wheat straw out of this, by the way. I should probably replace this floor with dirt, because I don't think the clay is going to be beneficial to us. So let's go to our train menu. We're going to say replace the floor. Actually, do, do mushrooms grow in clay? I don't recall. They will not grow in clay. Okay. So I wanted to do a mushroom farm. It seemed like the kind of thing that would be interesting and unique to have. I don't know what you do with mushrooms. I think you make tea out of them, actually, if I'm remembering correctly. It's been a long time. I think the last time I played was right after they put in mushroom farming. So let me replace the floors here. So we want to replace them with floor, obviously dirt. This is why you keep dirt on hand is because eventually you will have to do one of these little weird gnomish renovations to make sure that you can farm. So don't get rid of all your dirt, or you're going to have to do like some unnecessary mining, and you'll be like, damn it, I've got to do unnecessary mining. This is so inconvenient on multiple levels, even though it's not really that convenient. It's kind of like one of those first world problems, hashtag type things. So we've got a few more gems down there that we can make use of. But basically on this layer, not much. I'm going to keep the wall torches going out. just to ensure that something gets done around here. And what we'll do is we'll take this wall and we're just gonna extend it all the way down to here. And it's exploratory mining time. This is not necessarily the most fun. It's not my favorite thing to do. I definitely don't enjoy exploratory mining as much as I do other aspects of the game. But we've got ourselves a reasonable amount of dead time right now, so I feel like it's probably a good idea to get her done without complaining too much. Our yaks can't breed. But what they will do is supply us with a massive, massive stock of lovely, lovely milk, which takes a little bit of the pressure off of our drink stocks. Our birch trees are growing back, so that's good. We'll have those back in place in just a moment. With regards to our grain, we've still got 90 grain, so it looks like we're keeping it pretty even right there. I think that little hubbub that we went through with our food stocks, I can't believe I didn't notice that for so long. I just assumed that everything was okay. Where is the mant at? Oh, he's right there. Okay. Get on him. And that was that. Let's take a look at that combat because it was pretty quick. Combat active. The fifth day. The group fight. Let's see here. We hit it and cut its chitin with an axe. So that's good. And then the Warhammer smashed the chitin. Bashes with her bronze shield, hitting the head and smashing the chitin. The man is knocked back. Mr. Cuddlesworth then swings with his bronze warhammer at the mant, hitting its thorax, crushing the chitin, and destroying its heart. The mant has died. Pretty soon their weapons should upgrade. By the way, I mean at a certain point when you amass a certain amount of kills, I think it's like 15 or so, your weapon will upgrade and it'll turn into a named weapon. We don't get to name it unfortunately, I would love to, but... Oh, I forgot to- no! I forgot to switch the, the red thing. No, I'm so disappointed with myself right now. I really am. I can't actually exclaim the extent to which I'm disappointed with myself. It's it's bad. I feel terrible. Oh well. I'll do one in the next episode. 
these little tiny oversights while I'm recording. And of course, our worst miner ever is the one that ends up trying to get through the sapphire lair right there. One more, you can make it. And we'll put in a final torch right there. I'm wishing the torches were going a little bit faster, but the downside to a lot of the things that are occurring are... We keep losing people, and then I've just gotten a really bad arrangement of gnomes. I've gotten way too many miners. And you can assign people to, like, go do other stuff, but... Eh. I should build some crates, but I'm worried about my plank supply. Yeah, we're crafting a lot of sticks right now. Okay, so that's all been handled. What we need to do now... It's interesting... I have no idea. Anyways, let's go ahead and designate this as an underground farm. Just because I'm interested to play around with the mechanic, I think. We'll call it a mushroom crop, I don't know. It says it requires mud plots, but... The reason you guys have been talking about the Great Hall down here, I'm going to finish it. We're not actually going to finish it. We're going to put it up above ground later on, so I don't want to waste the resources right now when I'm going to have to tear it down in just a little bit anyways. Our Kingdom Worth is kind of exploding out of control to begin with, so we need to be careful about that too. I think Mance will start to show up once you have more than like 400 fruit in your... I think... I don't remember the specific number. There's a specific number that the game checks, and once you're above that with regards to how much fruit you have, these little insectoid bastards start showing up all the time. I also need to build some... let's put some torches out here. You can't put torches in a guard area? Hmm. Interesting. I'm not gonna move. You guys had mentioned that I should move the training area right here. It looks ugly. That's why I'm not doing it, by the way. It looks aesthetically unpleasing. So yes, while it is a very, very efficient option. I just don't like the way it looks, and so therefore, gonna pass on it. Not gonna do it. Alright, let's get back to more exploratory mining here until we find ourselves some iron. Chances are we're not gonna hit any in here, but... The, di the farther down we dig, the worse the tunnels are gonna get, too, or the worse the caverns are gonna get, so... becomes one of those kind of catch-22s where we really want to find iron as high up as possible. Ooh, a clay golem. Clay golems aren't necessarily that threatening. What layer is this on? Yeah, clay golems aren't bad, but that corner right there is going to be problematic, so I guess we'll build a torch right there again, just to make sure that it doesn't happen in a future time, just because let's say that we get attacked in the front gate and then a clay golem spawns too, Half of our guys are going to go down there, or even worse, all of our guys are going to go down there, and then the front gate gets attacked, and it's just... I don't want to deal with it. I just want to make sure that we never have monsters spawn underground. I'm going to break the episode off right here. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me in the Nerd Castle for another episode of Nemoria. If you like the game, make sure that you support the developers by going down below and purchasing the game. I will see you guys in the next episode. I think we're probably just going to continue mining in an exploratory fashion, just getting all up in those mines and making sure that we know what we're looking for, I think. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next episode. Take care, guys.